Okay, so this video is about vector acceleration. So if we have velocities and they're changing, then we're going to have an acceleration. So I'm going to show you how to calculate what that value would be. So the question here is we have an object, or an object, a bike rider who's going, <coughs> excuse me, five meters per second north. And in five seconds, she changes that speed or velocity to five meters per second east. We're trying to find her average acceleration for that period of time. So an important thing to note here is if we say, give her a final speed of five meters per second and an initial speed of five meters per second, that gives us an acceleration of zero. But that's not the case here because we're changing velocity. Anytime there's a change in velocity, there's an acceleration. So we have to figure out a value for that acceleration. Acceleration of zero means there's no acceleration. So we have to find a value. For that, we need to get into two dimensions. So I'm going to start this using the, the seven-step problem-solving method. I'm going to start with the target. We're being asked for an average acceleration. It's very important to remember to put that little arrow to remind us we're looking for a vector. So the answer is going to look something like this. Acceleration equals something meters per second squared and there will be a direction on the end of that. So there's our target. That's what we're trying to get. <coughs> Concept. Draw the picture first. I will probably have to erase some of this, but that's all right. Five meters per second north is the initial speed. We'll call that direction north. And then the final speed is five meters per second east. And if you think about this, now this is a good time to really think through the concept of this problem. You probably understand that for something to change velocity, you need to have something acting on it to do that. Something doesn't just change velocity by itself. We'll get into that more in the next unit. But if you think about this for a second, if you get pulled, if you, if you get pulled so that you go from a north velocity to an east velocity, whatever's pulling you would have to pull you somewhere in between those two. You should, that's the only way you're going to do it. If it pulls in the direction you want to end up, then your direction is going to end up being up here somewhere. Right? So this, isn't, this, this diagram is a good way to start, but it's not going to be our finish point. Now, I'm going to continue with algebra. So we've done the target, we've done the concept, sort of. We've got the given information in there. We can just write 5.0 seconds in here as well. So now we're going to look at the formulas. Formula for velocity when we have an initial, or sorry, acceleration. When we have an initial velocity, a final velocity, and a time, acceleration looks like this. Final velocity minus the initial velocity, which is delta v, change in velocity, divided by the time it took to change. So that works fine in one dimension. You can just have a positive and negative values there and work things out. But in two dimensions, this doesn't quite work because the first velocity or the final velocity is east and the initial velocity is north. So what we have to do is try and figure out how we're going to do this with vectors. Well, we've learned how to add vectors. If we want to add vectors, we place them head to tail and get the resultant. But when we're working in corners, when we're going around corners with vectors, we can still do head to tail, <clears throat> but this is adding. Never told you how to, how to subtract vectors. So what we have to do is we have to kind of understand the little concept on the side here. And I'll do it with math first. If we say 8 minus 5 equals 3, another way we can write this is 8 plus negative 5 equals 3. So what we did was we added the negative in order to subtract. That works with the vectors as well. So let's take this back a little bit and draw a new diagram to illustrate this point. If we are going to have two vectors, we've got v1 over here and v2 over here, and we want to do v2 minus v1, then what we're going to have to do is start with v2. So here's v2. We want to subtract v1 from that. Well, v1 is going north 5 meters per second. If we want to subtract it by adding the negative of v1, 
then we flip it. Negative, if V1 is 5 meters per second north, then negative V1 is 5 meters per second south. Sorry, negative V1. So now we're adding negative V1 to V2, which is the same thing as subtracting V1 from V2. And the resultant to get that delta V is the resultant of those two vectors. Now we can just use Pythagoras <coughs> and tangent to figure out the magnitude and direction of that delta V. So this one's uh, V2 is 5. V1 is 5. So we're going to go 5 squared plus 5 squared. That comes out to 50. And that's going to be delta V squared. So delta V, 7.07, .07, and so on. So now we have a magnitude for our delta V, our velocity change. That's the, the value there. And then to get the angle, two things we can do. We can either go tangent, in which case we're going to go tangent of theta. It's 5 over 5, which is 1. So theta equals 45 degrees. Or we can understand that this is an isosceles triangle, so those two angles have to be 45 degrees, so this has to be 45 degrees. So now we have our delta V. Our delta V is going to look like this. Delta V equals 7.07 .07 meters per second, and that is east 45 degrees towards south. So east 45 degrees south. There's our delta V. And by the way, I would keep the original value. When I did my square root here in the calculator, I would keep my original value in the calculator because I'm going to need it in just a minute. Now we're going to take this back over and put it in this equation. So that our acceleration is equal to, we'll just keep it as delta V over T. So it's going to be the square root of 50 east 45 degrees south divided by 5.0 seconds 5.0 seconds not seven 5.0 seconds <clears throat> when we divide that out we get 1.41 meters per second squared east 45 degrees south and that is our acceleration. So that can come back up to the top. Now I gave you two significant digits. So it's going to be 1.4 meters per second squared, east 45 degrees. So that's your final answer. Now one last thing to point out here. When we did the original concept here, we drew this arrow. The arrow of the acceleration, the thing that's making it accelerate, is in between those two vectors. And when we worked it out, that is east-south, so we got it right. Conceptually, it works. And this is what that looks like at the end. Where is it? I gotta stop it. There it is.